Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with kind of a mishmash of all the recent things I've been doing <laughs> or using. One of which is this Arches background stamp. This was part of Simon's Yay You release from earlier this month. And I've done a couple videos now using it. Love it. This time I wanted to do a very neutral, soft bit of a background with it. Any kind of geometric background would work, like the abstract triangles one I used the other day. That would work. Anything, really. So I inked up the stamp with Simon's Fog ink, and then I stamped it onto a couple panels of white cardstock. I could have stamped directly onto the card front with that, but I didn't want to. I wanted that extra little layer. Sometimes it just, it just adds that little extra something, you know? So I did that. And then while it was sitting out, I have my card base that I masked off at the score line. And then I'm stamping it with the same ink onto the insides of these cards. Just again, while it's here, why not? So just using my little mini stampin' bug and some scratch paper with the card base because I didn't want to pick up any of that ink and smear it on what will be the like back of the card. So I did that stamping. And then I have more panels here and I have the CZ Design Silhouette Sentiments set that I've done videos on. I've used the sentiments in recent videos. And then with this whole um, rainbow trio of inks and the brayering and all that stuff that I've been doing, I was like, ooh, the silhouette image in this set would be so perfect for that. So why not make a card? <laughs> so I've lined it up on these panels in my misty and then i just have a one of my little craft sheets this is the one that comes with the tim holtz like media glass mat any like non-sticked non-stick craft sheet will work and i'm just mushing my oxide ink pads using more of like the edge of the ink pad onto this i'm using mer mustard seed mermaid lagoon and picked raspberry just putting the yellow in the middle the pink on one side the blue on the other and then I use my brayer. This happens to be the Tim Holtz brayer. Any rubber brayer will work for this. And I just roll it. So now I've got this gorgeous like rainbow ombre ink combo going on here. So I brayer that onto the stamp and I stamp it. And then I make sure the cardstock's still in place so I can stamp it a second time. Because doing this while you do get like this gorgeous blend, you don't get as much ink as you would pressing an ink pad to a stamp, you know? So generally I have to, you know, ink up the stamp twice with the brayer to get a more solid image, which is fine. And then before doing anything, I positioned the inside of one of the cards in my Misty and then just stamped that image. So I'm getting like the second generation stamping on the inside, which is very, very light, which is perfect because then I get that, you know, the color and the image, but it's not too intense and I can like write over it easily. So I did that and then I repeated the process all over again. It will depend on the, the type of ink you're using and like the amount of colors, etc. how many times you can kind of use that little makeshift ink pad on the craft mat with the brayer. You'll start noticing after a while, the more times you roll through it, one, it's picking up that ink, but it's also like mixing it all together and things will start to go kind of blurred and muddy after a while, but I can usually get, well, obviously at least, you know, two solid cards out of that, but I've done a little bit more, but I've, I forget what video it was. It wasn't that long ago, but I noticed like the colors were just starting to go muddy. So you just play with it, see what happens and experiment with different color combos too. I'm just kind of obsessed with this color combo at the moment. <laughs> because anything that makes rainbow is perfect. So anyway, I trimmed down those panels that I had stamped with the arches background stamp just to be slightly smaller than my card base. And then these pieces with the silhouette flowers, I trimmed down much narrower. And I also trimmed off just the slightest little bit on the bottom because there was a little gap between the stamp and the bottom of the cardstock. So I cut this down. Um, I didn't have an actual measurement with this, literally. I was just eyeballing it. I was like, oh, let's make this the same size as the other one. So I trimmed them both down with my guillotine trimmer. And then after I got all of that, I'm going to stamp a sentiment 
from that Silhouette Sentiments set. I'm going to line this up. I wanted to get the sentiment stamped and I'm going to get everything adhered before I add splatter. Even though I knew there was a chance I could like end up with splatter on top of the sentiment because I'm going to use black splatter. But my thinking was, I was like, eh, if I mess up the sentiment, you know, get splatter where I don't want it, I can just heat emboss the sentiment on black cardstock or something and glue it on top and it'll be fine. So didn't end up having to do that, but that was the thought process. So I stamped those sentiments and then um, on the insides of the cards, I didn't use my Misty for this because the images weren't stamped, you know, in the exact same spot. And I specifically wanted this stamp right at the bottom of those flowers. This is also from the uh, Silhouette Sentiments set. So I just used an acrylic block and inked that up because I wanted it to look like these flowers were like kind of growing out of the sentiment. I thought it was kind of cute. So I stamped that on the insides. And then I'm going to adhere those background panels to the card fronts just with some craft tacky glue. So like I said, you could, you could stamp the background stamp directly on the card base, but sometimes just having an, a layer, you know, it just, it adds just that little extra bit of intention. I don't know what you want to call it, but anyway, adhered that with craft tacky glue. And then the panels that I stamped the rainbow of florals onto, those I'm going to put Simon's Big Mama foam tape on the back of. So they're going to give it a little bit of dimension, not quite enough bulk, um, because Simon's Big Mama foam tape, it's about half as thick as standard foam tape. So it's about a 16th of an inch, if I'm correct. I think that's the thickness of it. It's thin and I love it. It's like my absolute favorite foam tape of all time, as I've used it in how many bajillion videos. Anyway, coated the back of these panels with the foam tape, peeled off the backing paper, and then popped these into place on my card fronts. And then once those are adhered, this is when I'm gonna add splatter. I was like, gold splatter would look great. Oh, gold splatter would look really pretty or like perfect pearl powder mixed with water. That would just add a very like shimmery, subtle splatter. I went with black. I'm on the black splatter kick again and I just, I don't know, I really like it. So I'm using black soot distress paint and a regular paintbrush, not a fan brush. I use my fan brush for splatter when I want like big blobs and, you know, splotches of splatter and all the fabulousness. But 99% of the time when I'm using black soot distress paint for splatter, I don't want the big blobs. So I just use a regular brush. So did my splatter. I'm going to let that dry. I immediately washed my brush and my palette because distress paint dries permanent and you don't want to wreck your tools. So washed all that off, let everything dry. And then as a final little embellishment, I couldn't resist pulling this oldie but goodie. This is the flickering butterflies wafer die set that I love. And I die cut just some gold glitter cardstock from Simon with these. So I've got these little like glittery gold butterflies. Oh, they made me happy. <laughs> So I just glued those into place with little dabs of craft tacky glue. And as always, the ones left over, every time I use this die set, whatever's left over, I stick it back in the packaging with the wafer die. And the next time I go to use it, it's like I've got a little collection of random, you know, butterflies that I can add to cards because they're perfect little embellishments. So I added some to the insides as well, or added one of the big ones to the inside of each card just to finish it off and made sure to remove any excess glue that it used out so I don't end up gluing my cards shut. And so then once I've got that adhered, let the glue dry, I'm going to pair these cards with uh, Simon's metallic gold envelopes just to kind of tie it all together. And that finished them off. So kind of quick and easy, not necessarily clean and simple because I struggle with that. But yeah, really fun. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list, links to all the supplies I used in the blog post. It's picture links to all the supplies. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.